clerk please read the uh, roll the board come to order here Adel here Avedesian here Buell Bush here Curry here Drake Gardo here Gentile here Healy Hoffman here Hoheb Holloway here Yono here Chance Lester here Lewis here Magnan here Maniscalco Mandike here Murata Payne here Patel here Patoski Salemi Taylor here. Tor Torres here Vecino Wolf here here we have a quorum. Okay. Um, Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four, approval of meetings of the minutes of August the 1st, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any additions or deletions? Being none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Um, Item five, public comments relative to agenda items. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, Attorney Joseph Shereko, independent consumer advocate for the record. Uh, I would just like to briefly speak about agenda item 13A, uh, which is uh, BPW consideration and potential action regarding the deep consent order number COWR. MU22002. Um, I, I just want to stress the paramount importance of paragraph uh, B4 of the draft consent order for consideration tonight, uh, which, as I'm sure all commissioners are aware, uh, has a, a pretty extensive set of requirements for keeping the public updated on progress uh, of implementation of, of the plan. Um, and you know, I, I noticed in reviewing the minutes of the December 2018 public hearing that that seemed to be a common um, uh, issue that was raised, the, the fact that uh, several citizens and uh, advocacy groups felt as though they had not been included in the um, prior iterations of the integrated plan and long-term control plan updates. Uh, so I would hope that going forward that is a, a focus um, of, of the, the Bureau as well as uh, this board in, in considering whether uh, to execute the consent order. And, and lastly, I would just like to point out that over the past several months, uh, I have been contacted by several customers who have complained uh, that they felt as though they did not know when uh, clean water project construction would be occurring on their streets, what it would entail, and how it would affect their surrounding environment. Uh, so uh, I just would like to stress the importance of that public outreach um, uh, process going forward, and, and I would hope that, uh, as the order itself suggests, that I would be included um, in, you know, reviewing the, the, what goes out to the public and, um, and involved in those annual progress reports. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Further questions? If not... Um, item uh, number six um, is a report from the district chair chairman. I have nothing tonight to, to discuss. Um, number seven, report from the chief executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've got lots of items, but I'm only going to do three, the most important ones. Um, so 
Uh, I'd like to just take a moment. Uh, we lost the uh, MDC longtime employee over the weekend, passed away, uh, Ralph Halverson, and he was our supervisor at the CEM, which is the repair shop that takes care of all the trucks and the vehicles that all of our employees drive. Um, you know, he was our mechanic uh, 19 years. He was a wonderful man, uh, and it was a shock to all of us. So uh, our thoughts go out to his wife and his family, and it's going to be a, a sad, uh, sad for, for him and for us. Um, he was supposed to retire on December 1st. So um, that's a sad thing for all of us. Um, the two very important uh, operational um, instances that I really need to inform you on, uh, August 18th, we had a contractor working for DOT hit one of our transmission mains, and as you may know, we have three major transmission mains that come from the West Hartford filter, and then we have transmission mains come from Bloomfield. The West Hartford transmissions feed almost all of the, um, uh, the, the towns on the west side of the river, and, um, and then uh, through the winter, uh, it feeds um, obviously East Hartford and Glastonbury and Rocky Hill, and that, that's a joke because a long time of talking. <coughs> Uh, but but uh, Bloomfield feeds obviously the higher portions of our, our, our reaches in our water system. And in the summertime, it, we have a, a, a river uh, crossing which, which supplements East Hartford, which also helps East Hartford and helps Glastonbury. So major transmission main hit off the I-84 um, accident, although liable, contractor liable, DOT liable. I just want to give Chris Levesque and, and, and uh, Dave Ruddy and our operational staff uh, engineering. This is something when you break uh, or have to shut down a transmission main in the middle of a drought, in the middle of the heat of the, of the summer, um, uh, we've shifted our hydraulics to allow more water from Bloomfield to come into the system to feed West Hartford and feed East Hartford. Uh, just a great job. Uh, we spent about, there's about $120,000 just worth of parts, uh, uh, connections to fit the old 54 inch, uh, cast, um, sorry, concrete pipe. So Chris, his staff engineering operations did an amazing job. The contractor helped us do most of the excavation because we didn't want to bring our equipment onto the highway. Uh, so we'll be, uh, we're, we're working with legal to get uh, reimbursed for that through a claims process. Uh, the other issue is, unfortunately, as you remember, back in um, uh, 2018, we had a major collapse of a uh, liner, that new technology liner that we used on Lindbrook. And Commissioner Bush, unfortunately, had to live through that um, prior to him being a commissioner. Uh, and it was, uh, it was a very difficult circumstance. That liner uh, was replaced uh, in 2018, um, but uh, th there's about 1,000 feet of liner that was done in that job, and about 230 feet of that off of North Main Street uh, started to fail, and we immediately did not want to go through that same scenario, uh, so we immediately set up bypass pumping, talking directly to our commissioners from West Hartford, the mayor, and we replaced, just about two weeks ago, we replaced the pipe. We didn't want to take any chances with trying to reline the old pipe because we didn't know the condition because the liner is hiding the condition of the existing pipe. So we made a decision to simply replace all of it, about $300,000 to replace that pipe. Again, we're going to be going after the same entities that we went after under the Lindbrook claim. Uh, Chris Stone is handling that for us. And to be safe, we don't, did not want to handle this, uh, deal with this issue again. We decided to line all of the UV liner, which was the problematic child liner system that we used, and we're in the process of doing that now. So there will be about 1,000 feet of pipe uh, in, within that project area that will be relined with a traditional steam heated liner. Uh, so, uh, and that total project is going to be about a uh, million dollars, but it's, we do not want to take any risk whatsoever uh, in, in, uh, in dealing with that old UV liner technology. So 
uh, kudos to Chris's staff, his himself, uh, engineering department, Susan and 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 Jay and and uh, Mike and Dave Ruddy. Amazing job. We've got some great talent uh, in our engineering, construction, and operational department. So thank you very much for that. And that's my report. Oh my yeah. Other questions? Rick, go ahead. I just want to make a follow-up. This is Commissioner Bush. I just want to make a follow-up uh, to uh, Scott's uh, comments. So I, I'm currently living through that construction on Lindbrook, and um, uh, MDC has done an excellent job of managing the expectations of the, the neighbors. Um, they've, the, the contractor, VMS Construction, has been extremely professional. They've done an, an excellent job of maintaining the roadway so people can get in and out of their driveways. Um, uh, they've been clean and neat. Um, so I just want to just make that comment for the public record. Further questions of the uh, chief executive's report? Not bad. I'm impressed, Chris. Wow. You, you caught me uh, off guard, Scott. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, um, if, District Council? If I may. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, we, you have on the agenda tonight discussion on the um, deep landfill issue, uh, and, and that involves in large part uh, strategies going forward, but I do want everyone to know and the public to know that uh, we did get, as you know, permission to sue the state on claim number one on the landfill that was issued in May of 2022. We have until May of 2023 to actually bring suit. That suit has been prepared by our council uh, that's been handling this case from uh, uh, day one, along with with my office, and uh, that's ready to go whenever um, whenever it's um, whenever it's a good time to file it. But we'll discuss that in the as part of the regular agenda. On the Cobra case, we filed our motion, our uh, uh, declaratory judgment action uh, with the um, Department of Public Health. Uh, they had 60 days from the date we filed it to assign a hearing officer to the matter. They did that on the the accomplished that task on the 59th day of when they could do it. And in large part because they're understaffed and overworked, and, and, and we all get that. But uh, that being said, I expect the hearing officer uh, who's been appointed to issue a scheduling order within, sometime within the month of September is what I'm told. So as soon as that comes in, I'll advise you of, uh, of that schedule and uh, where, how we proceed going forward. The Marriott uh, Sewer Assessment Appeal was um, argued before the appellate court back in February of this year. Um, our, our argument went very well. I know that John uh, Myrtle had uh, listened to it remotely. I've listened to the, the hearing uh, transcript of it, or the uh, audio of it. Um, we'll see what happens, but it's we, we're due for a decision. They're not subject to the same 120-day requirement that the um, uh, Superior Court is uh, subject to. So they have as much time as they need. And what I'm hearing, I spoke with our attorney last week, I'm hearing that uh, they're a little behind schedule. So it's six to nine month process to get a, a decision. So we're looking at some, hopefully sometime before the end of the year that we'll get a decision on that case. As Scott pointed out, there is that uh, uh, yet another uh, Limbrook uh, claim. Uh, same issue, um, same, uh, same players. Uh, we've drafted a notice of claim that will change over time depending upon what our actual damages are or more specific as they increase over time but we'll get that notice out and uh, i'm sure we'll hear from uh, both ludlow the the general contractor as well as the installer which was in uh, precision uh lining uh, also another defendant on our earlier case as you know that we resolved uh, a few months back and then finally uh just to bring you up to date on the <coughs> tunnel litigation if you recall, there was a, a DRB proceeding in April of 2021. Uh, at, at that proceeding, it was clear that one of the three DRB members was not fully participating. We proceeded, notwithstanding that, reserving our right to make a claim later on. As it turns out, subsequent meetings and discussions led not only us, but quite frankly, even the other side to believe that that particular member of the DRB really wasn't um, uh, wasn't the right person for the job. And uh, um, we went from having a three-member DRB, which is what we contracted for, to a two-member DRB, which we did not contract for. Um, we tried to work out with the other side a third member of the DRB, uh, a member that we had chosen, that they had chosen, was acceptable to both of us. They were on both of our lists. And then all of a sudden, they changed their mind. 
uh, because they did they finally did a little due diligence and they discovered something that was available to everybody in the world because it was on the website and and all of a sudden that particular member became or potential member became a problem that being said we balked we said we had an agreement uh, you're, you're, you're balking. They filed a lawsuit in federal court. That federal lawsuit was a declaratory judgment to get the court to order a third DRB member as chosen by the DRB association or a similar association like AAA, American Arbitration Association. We defended that. Um, we felt that they brought that case in the wrong court. We filed a motion to dismiss uh, the action as being in the wrong court. We were successful in that. It was then moved out of federal court into state court. And uh, through the work of, of uh, Scott and his staff, they've been working to try to resolve or at least come to some understanding on, on the underlying claim, on the merits. So we, we've gone from a process issue to a very, um, I won't say fruitful yet, but at least active discussion on trying to resolve that issue, uh, not only with the, um, our partner in the, on the contract, but also with the involvement and consent of Deep, who's a partner, our partner, in that project, and by when I say consent, they're encouraging us to try to resolve it, and they'll participate to a certain degree in, in any settlement if we're able to achieve that. That I, I <coughs> give you that information because we then had a discussion with the other side on the state court action, and we agreed mutually, through no one's uh, with, without prejudice to either party, to remove that cloud over the negotiator's head, so to speak, with the litigation. They withdrew their claim from state court without prejudice, and I think I notif I know I notified the DP uh, Public Works of this, and we withdrew our claim on our, our uh, counterclaim. So they claimed on a declaratory judgment against us. We filed the same thing against them, saying we had a deal. We both withdrew our claims without prejudice. There's no harm to the MDC, no harm, quite frankly, to KOJV in doing that. But it allows the negotiators to not have to worry about where the, where the court's going to send us or lead us to in terms of litigation, save some money on expenses if we can settle it um, uh, in everyone's, uh, to everyone's mutual benefit. And so I, that's the update on, on the litigation. And that's all I have uh, tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chris, uh, just one question on the... Uh, on the Marriott Hotel, what was the date? That goes back what to 2012 or so. It goes back. It goes back at least to 2014. Um, not the litigation. We've had notices going out. Uh, uh, we've, we did have a, a superior court action uh, in which our on a on a contract claim which was dismissed. But then we have now we have an assessment which the board of fine uh, board of public bureau of public works assessed the property. This board approved that assessment. We filed the assessment on the land records. The Superior Court on the, under, on the other claim ruled that we should, um, ordered us to uh, release that lien or that assessment. We contested that, uh, and we contested that by way of an appeal of that order, and that's the appeal that's pending in, or that, the appeal of that order is pending in the uh, appellate court. And what's owed to the MDC? It's approximately three hundred thousand dollars, Bill. I can get you. I can send the exact number out. But that's and that's money that doesn't go into the operational side of our budget. It goes into the accessible sewer fund side of our budget, which is a cap, basically a capital account. Okay. Questions, Cal? Uh, yeah. Commissioner Torres. With, with regards to Commissioner Torres, uh, with regards to that. Uh, both of those incidents where our infrastructure was damaged, aren't these folks supposed to be calling? Before they dig, oh, are well, they this, compelled yeah. to do that? Is that the law? Yeah, it's clearly the our. <coughs> so the the damage on the 54 inch was clearly marked. There's a process we follow uh, through Pura, call before you dig. So we were clearly marked. Unfortunately, uh, the operator who was a subcontracted to a larger company um, uh, just made a huge mistake and was using a whole ram um, in an area that there was no rock. So. Uh, the rock was our pipe, and uh, so they made a, uh, he could have been killed. I mean, he really could have been killed. So we're happy no one got hurt, but yes, we followed the process. The pipe was marked out, clearly marked out by our utility services group, and, um, and the operator just ignored the marking. On the other case, it was a completed project. It wasn't an active construction project, but on the Limbrook, that was a completed lined pipe. And just like the other failure, over time, the, the seal between the liner and the interior of the pipe became um, compromised. 
a lip came down and started to block the flows going down. So there's no, there was no call before you dig on that. Uh, we we hear about we heard about it because we've gotten complaint, you know, received complaints and things like that. So, further, further questions. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's see, item nine, uh, referral to committees. A committee on MDC government regarding code of ethics acknowledgement and conflict of interest disclosure form recommended action refer to a committee uh, on MDC government. Is there objection? Without objection, stand referred. Item B, committee on organization, filling of committee vacancies, recommended action, refer to the committee on organization. Um, is there objection? Without objection, referral made. Uh, item 10, report regarding the 2022 Cyber Yankee exercise. Bob? Yeah. Hi, I'm Bob Schwarm. I'm the IT director for the Metropolitan District. Uh, I'm going to be presenting to you on, uh, today on uh, the Cyber Yankee exercise, which was carried out this year from 13 to 17 June. Uh, through this exercise, we do a lot of uh, uh, networking with the, the National Guard, and we gain a lot of knowledge, and, and I'm going to walk you through kind of that, uh, that scenario. All right, this is our Cyber Yankee team for Wadsworth Water. Wadsworth Water is the uh, group or the enclave that I was the captain for, so I was the, playing the part of the CEO. Um, we played with the, uh, from left to right, uh, the Marine Corps Reserves. Uh, they were our attackers. They're the bad guys that are trying to uh, compromise our networks and our SCADA systems. Uh, next to that is Eversource, or after the MDC. Uh, so we had a team member from Eversource's uh, threat hunt group uh, who really, you know, provided a lot of capabilities and uh, a lot of network integration between the water sector and the electric sector. Um, we also had Providence Water uh, who uh, really helped bring the continuity of the SCADA system and the administrative side of that uh, to bear. Uh, the Air National Guard and the uh, Army National Guard for the uh, state of Connecticut. So this is inside of our enclave room. This is just to give you an idea of what we look at and how we're, how we're operating. Uh, so what you see up on the board there is basically all of the threats that come from specific uh, types of adversaries. So uh, we go down that threat list and we try to dissect and figure out who's actually attacking us and what their common uh, techniques and tools and practices are. So the, the intention of the Cyber Yankee exercise is to provide a realistic tactical cyber exercise. Uh, this exercise uses teams from our local Army and Air National Guard, uh, as well as reserve units from Coast Guard, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. Uh, the scenario involves a cyber attack against critical infrastructure requiring the state governor to activate the local National Guard and units from across New England to assist in response and recovery actions. So the, the reason this is so vague is because we carry out this exercise uh, in, um, well, so far in the last seven years, uh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. But we plan on expanding that exercise to other New England states in the future. Uh, the value for the district is really to establish a memorandum of understanding, uh, which you know, establishes the rules for engagement within cyber. Uh, so when the military comes on our site, they don't rule us, we rule them. We guide them in what they can and can't do within our networks. Uh, it also helps us simulate and test our own incident response plans and ideas. So how we're going to respond to an incident is carried out throughout, or played out, you know, throughout this tabletop. Uh, we also build relationships with our local, regional, and federal organizations. Um, so behind the scenes, a lot of other organizations participate in this other than the ones that are attacking or defending. Uh, we have the NSA, we have FBI, we have Homeland Security, we have FERC, um, Federal Energy Regulatory Committee, we have NERC, we have uh, ISO New England. So we have a number of other organizations outside of the, uh, just the utilities themselves. Um, and we come back and we apply that, that knowledge that we gain at these exercises. So when we learn that Eversource is applying a new tactic or that uh, 
Boston Water and Sewer or, you know, uh, uh, Providence Water employing some new tactic. Uh, we try to follow suit and we try to learn from those and, and apply them on our own. So the military, or I'm sorry, the MDC exercise goals, we train with the military, we learn about their capabilities, we prepare and respond for future incidents and focus on events that warrant military assistance, uh, things that would require us to actually gain them to intervene or gain their uh, uh, their engagement to, to intervene. Uh, we share industry experience and expertise with military and other utilities to build their capabilities. And we learn about foreign threats to critical infrastructure and what forms those threats come in. Uh, my participation in this exercise, as I stated before, was as the CEO. Uh, I directed the utility response team activities. I coordinated military response team activities, managed public relations and communications, which this year we're going to integrate the governor's communication channel directly into this, this uh, exercise, um, and final decision maker for all proposed changes. Um, Chris Tavares and Tim Murphy are two of our, our guys in IT that participated this year um, in the systems administrator and SCADA administrator roles. Uh, and, and lastly, this is more about our general engagement, um, you know, beyond and including Cyber Yankee. Uh, so for the last five years, or for the last seven years, we've, we've uh, been included in this exercise five times, and we've uh, included five participants across the uh, IT team. Um, we're recognized as a water sector leader in cybersecurity. Uh, I was interviewed by NPR uh, on the Cyber U uh, Yankee value for utilities, um, contributed to uh, Connecticut's infra uh, infrastructure coordination group water, or for the water sector, which plots across all of the water companies how we're going to respond to t specific types of cyber emergencies and cyber events, um, as well as trying to draft new regulations and, and uh, guidance around that for our state. Um, I presented to the DPH uh, monthly water meeting on Cyber Yankee 22 just last month. Um, the, I was served as panelists for the um, S&P, or with, I'm sorry, the State of Texas uh, Chief Information Officer and S&P Global on the impact of cybersecurity on bond ra uh, risk ratings. I was a panelist for the Water ISAC, that's the Information Security and Analysis Center. Uh, on the America's Water Infrastructure Act, Compliance and Lessons Learned. And I've been a panelist for Siemens Executive Cybersecurity Forum for Water and Wastewater. Um, so I try to participate in a, in a more broad forum and in a more broad sense within the industry and the sector. Uh, and that's all I had. I had five minutes and I tried to squeeze it in. <laughs> Great job. Uh, Scott Jellison, I asked Bob to do five minutes because this is really important and we never seem to get a chance to talk about some of these really important <laughs> things that our staff are doing. And unfortunately, we canceled this two or three times because meetings were keeping canceled. But Bob and his staff truly are considered, you know, experts in the cybersecurity field. I mean, they've done an amazing job. We've built a, an IT department really from the ground up uh, since 2016. And I, Bob's just done an amazing job. And we found out yesterday that our cybersecurity insurance, was Kelly, our cyber insurance um, our premium has dropped. And it went from what to what? Uh, dropped by about a third. Uh, okay. About 30,000 down to 20 as a direct result yeah. of uh, Bob's answers to the questionnaire, the insurance question. And most of the companies in the industry can't even get the insurance because they don't have a program like we have under Bob. So Bob and his staff, Bob, have done a great job and continue to, so thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Uh, go ahead, Cal. Uh, Commissioner Torres. Thank you. Uh, Bob. Sorry. This is to Bob. Uh, this is so important. I yes. always, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm always worried about cyber attacks. I say, especially, you know, uh, water being so critical, sure. you know, to, uh, to <laughs> all of us. Uh, and it's a really important thing that we protect the, you know, the water source and the, uh, <clears throat> the delivery of that water. Uh, so when you when you say uh, critical. <clears throat> Uh, infrastructure. What are you referring to in terms of the critical infrastructure? So Homeland Security defines critical infrastructure as anything that's vital to our way of life. Um, so that would be anything from hospitals to 
uh, emergency services to um, you know critical infrastructure for DOT intelligence and, and anything involving utilities like water and, and electric or gas. And uh, in the event that uh, that there, there were uh, a cyber attack, uh, how do we recover from that? Do we have a redundancy mechanism in place or uh, operation? Yes, so, so we have two data centers that operate in tandem with each other. Um, they're, they're, uh, our backup data center is combined with the state of Connecticut's backup data center up in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, so we have co-location with the state of Massachusetts, with the state of Connecticut, and other uh, critical you know, operations. Um, we also back our systems up to the cloud now as a ransomware measure so that uh, in the event that we're ransomed that we can recover our data even if both data centers are compromised. Um, we have a number of other contingencies in place as far as our network operations and, and the, you know, the fiber optics that connect us all together. Um, but um, the, those are primarily our, our countermeasures as well as a lot of layers of protection. I sleep better tonight, thanks. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Um, We've lost here. Item uh, number 11, Water Bureau, um, consideration and potential action regarding layout and assessment, Coleman Road and Glastonbury, recommended action, received report, and adopt the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? I will. We moved and seconded. Um, Mike? Good evening. This is um, Mike Curley, Manager of Technical Services. Just a brief overview. Um, on August 22nd, uh, the Water Bureau uh, voted in favor to lay out and construct uh, 125 linear feet of water main to, uh, to s that water main is a class two water main along Coleman Road in Glastonbury to serve four properties that are currently on a, a common well that's mechanically uh, unreliable it has radon and uranium problems as well as uh, it goes dry several times a year. Um, each one of those property owners are in favor of the project and if it's built, um, it's been redesigned to allow itself to be expanded into other areas in Glastonbury. Um, Scott Jolson. Uh, I'd just like to add, we're gonna be using our MDC staff to install this 125 feet of main um, this is a section of a num of a larger project that was was uh, was not approved by by the residents of Glastonbury, uh, and unfortunately, these four in four homes uh, suffered from that um, failure to to vote for the project. So uh, they're in desperate need um, of this water, and we'll be doing this uh, over the next couple of months with MDC staff. Questions. If not, um, all in favor of the resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Item number, thanks, Mike. Item number 12, uh, Board of Finance, consideration and potential action regarding project closeouts. Um, at project A, um, we're going to uh, consolidate the I-1, I-2, I-3? Yes. Okay, so the motion, um, the recommendation consolidation of item 12, A-1, A-2, A-3, receive the report and adopt the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? Moved. They're second. moved and seconded. Um, go ahead, Bob. Sure. Uh, Bob Barron, I'm, I'm your Chief Financial Officer. We have before you tonight a request to uh, unauthorize uh, $30.5 million worth of previously authorized projects. There's 31 of them whose original authorization was $88.9 million, and the projects are all complete. <laughs> and have uh, had a total spending of 58.4 million. So the difference between the previous authorization and the actual spending with your authorization, well, with your deauthorization this evening will be returned to uh, the available 
um, borrowing limit for the MDC. This is a review that finance does uh, with operations and engineering, and we bring these before you periodically to make sure that all the old projects that have been completed are any surpluses deauthorized and returned for uh, and made available for borrowing in the future. Questions? Okay, that's that's on one, two, and three, right, Bob? That's correct. That that's the total for uh, water, sewer, and combined projects. Thirty-one. So what's what's projects. the return number to? The return will be thirty and a half million. <laughs> Three point five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If there's no further questions, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Item B. Um, approval of the State of Connecticut Financing Clean Water Project Funds. 728C, recommended action, receive the report and adopt the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Is it been moved? It's been moved and seconded. Um, discussion. Bob, go ahead. Sure. The, this language is familiar to you, but this, this request is just a little different. Uh, back in May, we put... Uh, well, first of all, um, 728C is contract three for the storage uh, tunnel. The total project value is about $138.7 uh, million. What's before you tonight is the loan portion of that, which is 52%. Uh, this was brought before the uh, Board of Finance in May, approved by this district board in June. But since then, we've had some updates. The, the project went down, the total project cost went down $10,650. And then the state came back and they said there's $213,000 worth of ineligible cost. They were uh, the camera equipment, video storage, controller, and monitoring. Those, that happens periodically when we send up all the list of uh, projects that are going to be done. Sometimes some are deemed ineligible. So with the 213 and the $10,000 um, removed from the project, 52% that's a, eligible for loan, uh, that dollar amount had to be modified. So what's before you is 72 million 019. What you approved back in June was 72 million 135. So it's, it's just an update on our uh, total amount that we can get, that we can borrow for at the 2% uh, borrowing rate. Um, uh, but but we needed to correct the total of dollar amount so we can actually execute it with the state. Questions? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. That passes. Okay, item number 13, um, Bureau of Public Works, consideration and potential action regarding a uh, State of Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection consent order number COWRMU2202, possible executive session. Is there an executive session in this? Okay. No. No executive session. Uh, Recommended action, receive a report, and adopt a resolution. Is there another, a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, discussion. Who's going to lead the I, Scott. Uh, thank you. So, so this, this, uh, this motion uh, allows, uh, gives me the authority as a CEO to sign the consent order with DEEP. We've had numerous conversations about this long-awaited integrated plan. Um, as we know, we've been spending on average $118 million a year uh, on the Clean Water Project, and we also are spending about $75 million a year on non-clean water sewer projects and water projects. What this integrated plan allows us to do is to take that 
40 million dollars of sewer projects that are being charged debt service to Avalorum and drop that down to like 18 million and then all these other projects that are certified under the integrated plan uh, will be done uh, at a 40 million dollar year average so it drops our cost it spreads out the life of the project and it makes it affordable for the, for our customers uh, so that's the intent of of this item uh, while we're here, I ju would just like to, uh, to re uh, just say for Joe, our advocate, that yes, absolutely, we have an obligation to educate our community. We can't really do anything until we get authority um, from the board to enter into the consent um, order. And then we're going to be coming back to the full board and BPW to also talk about, um, in the past, the old consent orders, which was our $1.6 billion, the two referendums, ordinances were passed by the board to tell staff that we can actually spend and how we're going to execute $800 million of projects through referendum. We're going to need to bring that back to you. We're not going to be needing to go to referendum um, unless our projects, uh, individual project exceeds quote, $23 million rule, which is legislation we were given in 2015. Um, and that applies. Bond Council has allowed us to utilize that uh, authority under, under uh, the statute uh, to do any clean water project under the $23 million rule. It's increased by the CIP on an annual basis. The board approves that increase on an annual basis for CIP work. We're going to ask and we're going to consider this, uh, we're going to be asking you on an um, annual basis to approve projects just like we have you do on the CIP uh, side of the, uh, of the MDC. And that way everyone will know those projects are identified in the integrated plan, they're approved by, uh, um, uh, by DEEP, they're approved by um, the board, and you'll know exactly how much we're spending, what projects. To Joe's point, we need to communicate to our public we presented this in BPW. When we're coming to do your projects in your areas, why we're coming to your street first, uh, we might be going to some streets in, uh, in Granby area instead of Blue Hills, and we'll explain why. And so we've got to create a team of internal staff. We've got external staff that will be helping us develop um, uh, stakeholder meetings, uh, and we will be ha holding meetings uh, on a monthly, bi-weekly basis, and construction is typically a weekly basis. So we have a lot of work to do. We have to submit that plan, I think, April 2023, Jay? 24 is the first. 24. But we're going to be work as soon as we get approval, we'll be starting the communications, the first piece uh, to be working, and we definitely will have Joe involved in that. Scott, what's the period of time we're going out, 40 years now? It, it's really integrated planning. Yeah, it, yes, integrated planning. What it really means is the way that we were doing the project under the original consent order, you had a deadline, you had specific projects you had to complete, build this tunnel, build that tunnel, do this separation, and you were done. And that <coughs> was a, uh, uh, defined by the consent order. Th this is different. This is a forever project. We, we need to, we're going to take longer to update the, the, uh, the infrastructure uh, over a much longer period of time. But because it's taking longer, what we update today will need to be updated 50 years from now. So it's, got, it's almost like a, a maintenance program rather than let's build big tunnels and let's not worry about the infrastructure that's in the ground in front of your home right now. And um, so it's going to be a long-term replacement, and it will be a forever project. But we do have a, a date, 2056 is the date, I, 58, sorry, 58. But it will be an ongoing maintenance program that the MDC will, be, will have to do forever. Um, and, and we'll probably never catch up because we're, uh, you know, the system is so old, and uh, it just, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. Questions? Commissioner Bush. Hi. <clears throat> uh, just a, a quick question. Uh, the reduction in the amount of money spent uh, on an annual 
basis, does that have any impact on the rate payers or the amount of money that they're paying in the clean water project fee added to their bill? Yes. So in our presentation at BPW, we had a couple of charts that showed here's the way it would work if we were going to continue on the old way. Uh, and here's the way it would work if we do the integrated plan. We even did on the integrated plan, we showed it by town. Um, and we, um, I think there, if my memory serves me, there was about a three to four dollar uh, decrease by doing it over a longer period of time. That one of the benefits to the towns is that the, Aval the debt service on Avalorum, and every time we have a, a budget cycle, we show debt service as part of our sewer uh, Avalorum cost to our towns is in that 35% of our budget. 35% of our budget is debt service, is a mortgage payment. So uh, this will help us slow that growth down because instead of spending 40 million a year, that you know you're borrowing 40 million dollars a year. That's about three million dollars plus or minus of of mortgage payment on that borrowing. Um, we're going to drop that down to 18. So we're going to flatten the curve for Avalorum as well. Does that have a a, a, a dollar? component as it, as it relates to, a, to an average uh, rate payer as far as a monthly bill would be concerned approximately? Yeah, yeah. so um, we have presented at BPW uh, last month, I think, uh, that the rate uh, right now for the clean water surcharge is $4.10 per CCF, and that's about $400 a year plus or minus for a 100 CCF customer, and um, that's going to go up. 20 cents this year? Yeah. 20 cents. So it'll be uh, 430. And we gave a schedule of a five year schedule of what that would go up. And it's, 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 it's anywhere from 20 cents to 35 cents over the next five years. In the old plan, it was, we were increasing that by 50 cents and a dollar. Just to clarify, uh, rate payers will not get a reduction in the clean water project fee. It will just not increase as rapidly. rapidly. The rate of increase will the not rate. be as rapid, right. correct, over over time. There are peaks and valleys, and I, we can provide this. We, we showed a graph at the BPW that shows the differences between the two, uh, but this is mo a more of a gradual uh, increase. <laughs> and just the last, the last co comment or question. Um, as you stated earlier, the 2058 or something, and then it starts again. So this is a, a permanent mm. increase to the ratepayers in their clean water project. It, it really is. It's it's something that um, our system is so old that um, we've we, in some of our presentations we showed that if we did nothing, uh, the average age of our system would be 75 years old, right? And if we if, but if we do the integrated plan, we start to reduce that average age down to the 35 uh, year, uh, which is a, you know, a 35 year old concrete sewer pipe or cast iron pipe is, is a good pipe. Um, but, but when you're not doing anything and you're building tunnels and all the pipes in the streets are getting older and older and older, eventually you're going to finish the clean water project with tunnels and big treatment plants. And then at the end of that, when they're all built, you're going to have to deal with this infrastructure that's in the ground in front of your home. I apologize, but your, your last statement prompted another question. Sure. Uh, and just to clarify for my own knowledge, uh, basically the ratepayers would have been paying additional sums regardless of whether we're doing the integrated plan or building these large tunnels. And in fact, well, would have been more money they would have been paying had we decided to build the tunnels and then subsequently have still have an aging infrastructure. Yeah. Correct. It also makes this an intergenerational project. It, it, it takes it on to other generations to, to support that yes. capital cost. Thank Further you. questions? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Item B, uh, Metropolitan District. Uh, <laughs> Metropolitan District versus State of Connecticut Office of Claims Commissioner, file number 25078. Uh, there's a executive session on this. Uh, so um, let's, well, let's uh, recommend that action receive a report and adopt the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? There's no resolution on that. I'm sorry, I'm, it says that, uh, yeah. <coughs> 
Okay, I'm sorry. So receive report. Discussion. And discussion. Motion, motion to go into session. Okay, is there a motion to go into executive session? Move it. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Who do you want to... Uh, Can I have a motion to come out of executive session? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, item 14, Personnel Pension Insurance Committee consideration and potential action regarding, uh, uh, again, these consolidated or separate? Uh, a. A. A1 through 3 can okay, be Okay, so we can go A, B, C, D. We can't combine, I, th I thought. Only uh, we can combine, what, three of them? A1, 2, and 3. Okay, just A1. Um, a, amendments of job specifications, recommended uh, <coughs> consolidations of item 14, A1, A2, and A3. Uh, receive the report and adopt a resolution. Is there objection to consolidation? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Taylor. Excuse me. Um, these three items were passed by unanimously. Uh, I, I, let me just call okay. for the, is there a motion to adopt? Moved. It's been moved and seconded. Commissioner Taylor, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Items A1 through 3 have been unanimously approved by the Personal Pension and Insurance yeah. Committee. Uh, our uh, HR director will uh, provide any explanations that you need On in the terms technical, of details. The technical yeah. values. Go ahead. Good evening, Commissioners. Jamie Harlow, Director Jamie. of HR. Um, as Commissioner Taylor said, uh, the item A has been approved by PPNI. It uh, really, at this point, the proposal is to amend uh, three existing job descriptions consistent with how, what we've been doing since at least 2015 trying to consolidate job descriptions uh, create multitasking job descriptions so all three of those reflect those goals that the district has been trying to work towards if, if i may go ahead Sean, I, just to add to i'm sorry i just it's chief executive go ahead yes thank you <laughs> and uh, i just want to add uh, this is a very important milestone so as jamie mentioned in 2015, we brought to this uh, board this is we took 44 positions uh, in 184, our labor union, and we created and turned them into 12. In 2017, we took our, uh, a number of our supervisor positions, and this is just an, three more, uh, and, we, and we turned 42 into 34. And then in, uh, we just recently uh, have come to an agreement with our 3713 union which uh, we've been working on for at least a year and a half, and the anticipation was, was getting the multitasking job descriptions approved prior to union negotiations. We just completed this, uh, and we took uh, 50 jobs, turned them into 18. So again, multitasking, doing more uh, with less, and uh, it's been a huge uh, success uh, at the NBC. So I just want to thank um, our unions, uh, and, uh, and Jamie and her staff and all of our staff it, are working so hard on it. Excuse that. me, and this is the last union, right? This is the last union okay. that we hadn't had multitasking job descriptions. So we've been trying since 2015. Are there questions? Uh, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Torres. Were, were the uh, salary ranges modified to, to, uh, to re reflect the additional uh, <coughs> responsibilities? Yes, it has, and um, uh, Jamie did, uh, I've got it here somewhere, Jamie, but we saved about, in this 3713 uh, uh, union negotiation to multitask, the 50 down to 18, we, the potential savings there is about $750,000. And uh, on these three positions that are in front of you, uh, there's no change in salary. They're just, we added multitasking responsibilities to them. Further co uh, questions? If not, um, all those in favor of uh, item A uh, signify by saying aye. 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 
Right. Opposed? Okay. Item B, approval of tentative agreement with AI, AFC, AFSCHE Local 1026. Uh, there's no uh, executive session on this, right? Uh, is there the recommended action is to receive the report and adopt the resolution? Is there a motion to adopt? It's been moved and seconded to adopt. Okay, Jamie. Great. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, the proposal in front of you again is to adopt the uh, tentative agreements that we have reached with uh, the local 1026, which is our supervisory union. Um, we started negotiations with them at the beginning of the year, um, really with the focus of um, a couple things, streamlining some of our existing business practices. We have multiple unions. We have exempt and excluded employees. Rules are all over the place. Uh, just trying to kind of streamline uh, as much as we can in certain areas. Also, simplifying business processes. We have some processes that were complex. Um, so again, that was a primary goal. And really one of the biggest goals we has, had was the implementation of a health enhancement program, uh, which 1026 did agree to. Obviously, you know, I know you've heard this before. We have a $16 million line item on the health insurance. And in order for that to be sustainable moving forward, we had to do something to get more engagement in our employee population. So um, again, we were able to accomplish many of those goals in these negotiations. I'm not sure if anyone has any specific questions, um, but that Are there again, questions? was the focus. Are there questions? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Item number C, uh, change to exempt and excluded employees benefits, recommended action, receive the report and adopt the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? It's moved. It's been moved to adopt. Um, Jamie, go ahead. Great, thank you, commissioners. Um, kind of in line with what we just talked about with the local 1026, we really were looking at exempt and excluded employees in the same capacity of you know wanting to make sure we're streamlining, uh, that we're consistent as much as we can be across the unions and the exempt and excluded. So really, uh, you know, the changes that we were proposing accomplish those uh, streamlining benefits, um, making them consistent, such as, uh, you know, HSA seed money and making sure sick leave accruals were in line. Um, so again, all of that is in line. So much of what you see in terms of um, the 1026 proposals are also what we're proposing for, uh, for the exempt and excluded group. Questions? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks. Opposed? Passes. Uh, item D, settlement of workers' compensation claim. Uh, Del Vecchio, recommended action, receive the report and adopt the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? It's been moved and second. Um, go ahead. This is, is this Scott? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. Jamie, go ahead. Jamie, yeah. Thank you again, commissioners. So uh, this is a workers' comp claim for an employee uh, that has retired many years ago. Uh, there are a total of six claims. Um, it has gone through the Workers' Comp Commission. The judge there has put a value on it, and that's essentially what we're looking to settle it at, at the value in which the Workers' Comp Commission has established. The likelihood of us settling it below uh, that amount um, is not likely. So again, but it would resolve the indemnity portion of all six of the claims for this employee. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Commissioner Taylor. Um, one of the things that, that you should understand is that in this situation, uh, even though the employee is retired, any workman compensation claims essentially are open-ended. In other words, um, the employee can come back 10 years after retirement, 15 years after retirement, uh, and if they can make a case, uh, we would have to pay. <clears throat> this settlement basically shuts the door. In other words, it is closed. Uh, there are no further claims. So uh, essentially, this essentially was a good settlement for us. And it was passed unanimously at the uh, PPNI level. Okay. Further questions? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you.
Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Uh, item 15, Internal Audit uh, Committee. A, consideration and potential... Uh, these are all separate, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. A, uh, consideration and potential action regarding resolutions regarding Sandler and Mara, PC 2021 and 2022 invoices. Recommended action, receive the report and adopt the resolution. Um, is it Chris? Oh, is there a motion to adopt? I'm sorry. So moved. It's been Second. Moved. Okay. The resolution is, is pretty self explanatory. It was passed by the uh, audit committee, and the recommendation has been made to the board that um, the outstanding invoices, which total between 2021 and 2022, Approximately eighty-five to eighty-nine thousand dollars that uh, the district not pay those bills. Okay. If I could, Mr. Chair, um, as Jackie, go ahead. Attorney Stone mentioned, this is Jackie Mandike, um, as he mentioned this passed unanimously out of commission after due diligence by the internal audit committee. We and asking. Um, those in authority to execute contracts, we determined that um, the claims for MDC um, for legal services did not exist. So therefore, we're, we would like the board to instruct our administration not to pay um, these invoices that we've received. <clears throat> Further questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Item B, report uh, regarding questions to William DeBella, recommended action, receive report. Is there an objection to receiving report? No objection. Okay. Item C, report referral to Ethics Commission Committee of possible ethical code violation by Commissioner Alvin Taylor, recommended action, receive the report. There's an objection to receiving the report. No rejection, no objection? No objection. Okay. Um, Question, Mr. Chair? Sure. When will the Ethics Advisory Commission or Committee meet? Chris? Well, they, oh, I'm sorry. They meet when called, so it's the guy we consider this a call to uh, have a meeting. It was considered, it, it was in fact, uh, as of the the passage of your resolution in the audit committee, uh, this is really, it was a, report. This is really a report to the board. So uh, I have asked John, and John is uh, John the clerk, to reach out to each member uh, to schedule a meeting. There is no standing meeting of the Ethics Advisory Board. That board needs to meet and organize. I know that James Wolf is uh, one of the members, and I, I don't know who the other members are, but they'll meet, organize, choose a chair, vice chair, and then... There are three members. Three right. members and two alternates, right? Right. I think, uh, right, two alternates. Diane and... Um, Commissioner Patel. Patel. Right, Commissioner Patel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item D. Consideration and potential action regarding referral to the board, possible violation of MDC bylaw B2K by Commissioner Alvin Taylor. Uh, recommendation, recommended action, receive the report. Is there objection? No objection? No okay. Um, Was there I, action on that, John, or no? I think as we discussed earlier. No. Right. That was fine. Okay. Uh, Item E, uh, consideration and potential action regarding budget for outside counsel to conduct independent investigation of issues relating to Sandler and Merrill PC invoices. Recommended action, receive the report and adopt the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Um, discussion. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Vecino. Yep. Go ahead, Commissioner. Um, I'd like to make a motion to refer this to Board of Finance for further review and understand the scope that we're going to be looking for from the attorney. Um, is, there, or is there a second to that? Second. There's a motion pending. John, how does that work? We have a motion on the floor. There's a motion on the floor. This is an amendment to the motion. Mm -hmm. Is it not? 
Well, I'm sorry, it's not. It's a procedural motion. It's a procedural motion he made to refer to the Board of Finance. Um, discussion. On, I'm sorry, could you confirm that, Mr. Chair? On the Chair, motion to refer the issue to the Board of, of Finance, um, would the proponent please uh, express the intent of the motion? Yes, I would like to go to the Board of Finance for further review of the scope in the services because the dollar amount is fifty thousand uh, dollars normally we go through finance first and i think it should go there now and understand the full scope that we're going to anticipate from the attorney okay well do you want to discuss I, yeah your just, situation? just briefly because we had this discussion at the audit committee and and i'm not going to speak to the uh, uh whether or not it should be referred to finance that'll be up to this board to decide but I will tell you that under the audit bylaw, it's a, it's a rather unique bylaw, I, I will grant you that. It gives the audit committee the authority to spend up to $5,000 for purposes of retaining uh, outside assistance in doing their job. Um, it, it then goes on to say that in the event that additional funds are necessary in order for them to hire outside consultants or, or assistants to do their job, they can do so with the board approval and through the district council's office, which to me means that it would come from my budget. Um, and, and that's what, the, in part, that's what my budget would be used for, to retain that outside assistance. Now, I'm not saying it can't go to the Board of Finance. All I'm telling you, it doesn't have to go to the Board of Finance. Well, let me ask you a question, because um, isn't there a question of recusement, recusing here? It will leave no lawyers available to the board no no no. well that's one of the reasons why that and, and and by the way just let's make it perfectly clear this is merely a from my understanding is it's a, and commissioner may correct me if i'm wrong there were two uh, motions that were before the audit committee uh yesterday one was on money on the budget and and that is the request for additional funds beyond the five thousand dollars within their bylaw authority and the second motion was to retain outside assistance for their for their their work. The second motion I just described was not acted upon. And although it's on the board's agenda tonight, Mr. Chairman, it, it, there's no action. It's there's no action to be taken because no action was taken by the audit committee. Um, they wanted to to get the authority to spend before they went out and and um, found someone to spend the money on. So um, I, I think the issues of scope and and uh, mm -hmm. of 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 the work will be dealt with in the audit committee certainly it could be dealt with at the finance committee but the the bylaw is very clear as to the, what process should be followed for the audit committee and, and and it really comes down to and one of the reasons why they're asking one of the reasons why they're asking for it is because um as the chairman points out um, I've, I've offered uh, uh, emails, uh, distributed emails. Mr. Jellison's distributed emails. The chairman has distributed uh, emails that he has available to, the, to him on the issue. And uh, if there's more investigation to be had, then one or more, all of us may be called in to uh, make a statement. So um, it disqualifies me from handling it. <coughs> it disqualifies my office. We're a law, we're a law firm. If you disqualify one, you disqualify all. Um, uh, unless the client waives it, and you certainly can, can waive that. But um, absent that, um, that was the reason for the request for the, for the dollar amount. Okay, so if there is no action, then there, there wouldn't be no legal participation. Is that what you're saying? Well, if there's, if there's no action on, on this. I don't mean there's no action. Yeah. If this doesn't get done tonight, right. there's going to be a period of time where there'll be no legal Advice is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. The the the, the, investiga the f investigation through an outside um, entity would be delayed. That's what I'm saying. I, that, I, I'm just uh, Mr. Chairman, it's Commissioner Vecino. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, Chris, what is the total amount of the claim? The claim is, and I, I sent you. I, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Vecino. It's approximately. And it includes part, part from 2021, which is approximately $14,000, and part from 2022, which is approximately 
uh, sixty-three thousand. So the total is between it's between seventy-eight and eighty thousand dollars, Commissioner. So we're we're looking at spending fifty thousand dollars on an eighty-three thousand dollar claim, correct? I'm sorry. I, I, I don't. I don't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. You asked me a question, I, and I answered you. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt you. No, I'm saying we're we're, we're looking to spend fifty thousand, not the five thousand that's allowable under the audit. Look, look, looking to spend. And I think if it was looking at a five thousand dollar investment, I'd be more than willing to to vote for it. But you're looking at chasing eighty thousand dollars with a fifty thousand. And Chris, you know what happens with attorneys. It won't stop at fifty thousand. And we'll be on the Ferris wheel. I, I and, and and thank you for that. So, uh, I have a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. Can we can we see if we can move the motion? Motion oh, on the table, Mr. Chair. I mean, I we can't call the question. I think we have additional discussion. Could I, could I re respond to it? We have a motion to refer. We can't amend the motion. The motion while the motion to refer is before us, to refer to the Board of Finance. If you want to withdraw your motion. You can withdraw your motion, and if the second withdraws or second, or if the motion is withdrawn, you can then make another amendment. You wish to withdraw the motion to finance, uh, to the Board of Finance? Rich? Repeat the question. Uh, you're, you're asking to make another motion. You can't make a motion when you have a motion on the floor that we're amending, unless you're amending the motion to refer. And I guess you're not. No. Okay. So if you, withdrew, if you withdrew your motion to refer to the Board of Finance, then you would be able to make a motion, whatever that motion is, I don't know, you would be able to make that motion. So All right. You, you, so I'll withdraw the motion. You withdraw the motion. Okay. Um, further motions? You want to make another motion, or do you? Yes, I would like to make a motion to refer the fifty thousand dollars expenditure to the Board of Finance for further review of the scope of services that are required by the attorney. I, I think, Rich, that's the same motion you made originally. It's, it's a referral to the Board of Finance. And the, and, and the scope be reviewed by the Board of Finance. So it's the same motion that's being made. So, Which, I mean, Chris, okay. a motion to refer Second is proper for with a main motion right. pending. Yeah, but not. But it has it takes precedence. It, does it take precedence? That's what I'm looking up. Does yeah. it take precedence over the. Yeah, it's, motion it's the motion to refer is debatable and amendable. Right. It requires a second, that. requires a No, no I understand bill. that. And, and I apologize for having this discussion. Uh, but you, you might as well hear it. Uh, there's a motion on the, on the floor. The motion was to appropriate additional monies. After that was made and seconded, there was a motion to refer. My only question is, and I'll see to you as the parliamentarian or the district clerk, does that motion to refer take precedent over the main motion, which was, okay, yes. so the answer is yes. Okay. okay. I, thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Torres and then Yes. Uh, the motion to refer. The motion to refer. Okay. You know, I was a, the maker of the motion to um, refer to this audit committee in the first place because I think it was very important that it be done in an orderly, objective fashion. You mm -hmm. know, follow procedure and protocol, and and uh, do a good job at at uh, what uh, we need to do to get to the bottom of this fiasco. Uh, but I also. Uh, uh, have had uh, experiences with doing investigations and having outside consultants come in um, and, uh, and how it balloons, how the, uh, the budget will balloon um, uh, because all kinds of things happen and people have to be interviewed and other things come up. Uh, I would like to have, uh, and I will vote for referring this to the Finance Committee to make sure that we understand what the scope is and that we, if, if we have to uh, add additional dollars to the budget, so be it. We'll have to look at that, but we need to know what, what we're going to get for this $50,000 uh, and, uh, and, and uh, control the, the expenses uh, because this is already going to be ballooning to something else. 
So uh, that's my, my experiences in this is that I think it's prudent to send it to the Finance Committee, get the scope of services, and, uh, and tie it down to uh, a, 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 a finite number. Further discussion? Ricky, you want to? I, w I think uh, Commissioner Avedesian. I'm sorry, next. John. Reje Commissioner Mandek. Chris Avedesian. Can you, you uh, help me because I'm just a little confused. Since the audit committee has been asked to investigate, they would be the ones that would put the scope together, which would determine what the money's going to be, and then that would then probably go to finance. But finance wouldn't. Does it, do they have the authority to decide the scope? No. The, the, look into what the, the scope the, is. The, the that scope be, the, that belongs to the audit committee. The the, <coughs> the board of the full board, in, in its discretion, uh, thought it the best course of action here would was a referral to the audit committee. And if I'm not mistaken, if it wasn't unanimous, it was close to unanimous back on August 1st, 2022. They entrusted the audit committee to do a job, and one of the things that they would do would uh, have considered doing is retaining an outside entity to conduct some in independent investigation. Okay, they haven't chosen anybody, but they also know that it's in all likelihood the cost of that would exceed five thousand dollars. They've also done some due diligence in terms of what it might cost and they've arrived at a number of, in, in their opinion, based upon the resolution last night, uh, that it would cost no more than $50,000. I don't know whether it's gonna cost more or less. I will tell you that based upon conversations that, that they've asked me to have and that, that uh, I know that Commissioner uh, Chairman Mandyke has had, it's, it's in the ballpark of $50,000. But that's the same discussion that would, have, would be had in the <coughs> finance, uh, finance board but in terms of setting the scope that's a province of the audit committee it's been they've been charged to do a job and 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 uh, from my discussions with attorney mandyke uh, i'm sorry with the uh, uh, chairwoman mandyke this is not a this is not a you know an, an open-ended you know let's see what we can find it's very specific it's very narrowly drawn and it they should be allowed to set the scope based upon their charge. Remember, the board initially set the charge back on August 1st. We had, we had a motion. It was made. Commissioner Gentile made an amendment to that. Commissioner Bush made an amendment to that. So the scope of the inquiry or their work has been in part defined, um, in large part defined by all of you. Uh, which include members of the finance board. So, listen, the, the vote on the referral is entirely up to this board, but those are the, the ground rules by which the audit committee has acted thus far and, and I would think would continue to act. Well, I, I think you'd also have to point out that they would be without legal counsel, would they not, for that period of time? Because no, no, you're, you're defining, I'm not doing an investigation. They're, if they want to define their scope, they can define their scope. I'm there to offer advice on what they can or cannot do or, you know, through the process, through procedures, et cetera. But in terms of the actual invest, I'm not doing that. Okay, that's the, they haven't point, even started that's the that point though. I want. Yeah, they I'm haven't making. even started that. For the record, I'd be against but, sending But they've been charged to start that. The finance committee should stay in the audience. Further discussion? Uh, go ahead, Jackie. Thank you, Chairman Fellow Jackie Mandyke. As Attorney Stone said, on August 1st, the MDC board sent an issue or issues with a clearly defined scope over to internal audit. Internal audit met several times to try and expedite and look at these issues. We have taken care of one this evening and brought it before you as far as not paying the bills that Attorney Sandler put forth. So right now we have reduced the amount that we are trying to look at, investigate, and we are trying to hold to a very <clears throat> quality, expeditious evaluation of what has occurred. I think our committee has done that. 
we are asking based on information that we have received there are inconsistencies so we are merely asking for up to not 50 we're asking up to fifty thousand dollars and we take this very seriously because we are spending money that goes directly to the people that we service and our towns and our committees we are asking to spend up to that amount to be able to perform the duties that you all around this table have asked that committee to do. I think that it is prudent to allow us to perform those duties and not send this to the Finance Committee. I think if you look at a process for this to, pardon me, for this to go to finance, you are jeopardizing the integrity of the entire investigation or the entire issue that we are looking at in internal audit. You are now putting roadblocks in front of an internal audit process by sending this to finance. And by the way, I just want to mention that we have a chair of finance who has been mentioned in these documents as well, who would probably have to excuse himself from that discussion as chair of finance. We are not asking for more than $50,000. And I would also argue that actions have been taken over the last seven months, potential actions have been taken over the last seven months that went ahead and put into libel MDC and may have encumbered funds far greater than what we're asking for for this situation. So I'm asking the board not to jeopardize the integrity of what the process and what we're trying to do. We are trying to follow a very good, fair process. You have seen mayors come out and support an independent investigation or council. You have seen our consumer council come out and ask us to hire an independent council. We are trying to provide you with information to make decisions based on what we find out in internal audit. So therefore, I respectfully request that this not go to finance. You will, uh, this process will go on and on and on. And we are trying to be, expedite this in a fair manner. So I ask the board to please vote this down and go ahead and approve us up to $50,000. And we will be prudent with that money to make sure that we go through the right process for this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse me, <coughs> Rick, Rich, and then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Manday, thank you. Uh, I, I know that this is a difficult uh, topic, and <clears throat> I know that it's an emotional topic. Um, it's emotional for a lot of people because it's, because it is difficult. Um, $50,000 is, is, is a lot of money, but, but what is the reputation of the board worth? Um, it's not just the board, but it's each and every one of us as commissioners and our responsibility to the board and to the ratepayers to make sure that we get to the bottom of, of the problem and we uphold our duty to find the truth and to you know hold those accountable for whatever actions have, have taken place. If we refer this to a smaller committee, um, it dilutes our power. It takes away our power. It takes away the power of the board, and it gives it to a much smaller group of people. And, um, and I think that's, uh, that's, that's not what we need to do as a group. I think we need to act and show that we are a powerful board and that we can handle our affairs. We do have the power to allocate the $50,000. We don't need to go to finance. We don't need to go anywhere. There's a problem. We need to solve it. We have the power to solve it. We have an extremely robust debates in the audit committee. Our chairman has been outstanding. The members of the committee have been outstanding. Um, very, very difficult topic, very difficult discussion. But that's what that committee is there to do. Why are we taking the power from one committee and giving it to another committee? Because if that other committee says no to the 50,000, then the audit committee just got cut right off. There's no such thing as the audit committee. Why even have the audit committee?
This is an important issue. This, the entire reputation of the MDC is at stake, in, in my opinion. And I think it's important that we do the right thing. We hire an independent counsel. We take away the responsibility of any, uh, of, of any emotion. We take out all of us. We take us off the table. We let an independent person come in, figure out what happened, and then present to us the information so we can act on it with, with the proper intelligence, without emotion. But the Thank discussion, you. Commissioner Patel. I seconded the motion, and I think chairman of the committee correctly explained it. And it was discussed. The scope will be determined by that committee. Because they know what the scope is, they will discuss it and set their limit based on they know how much money is available. So I seconded the motion, and I think we should support it. There is no need to send it to anywhere else. Otherwise, it will be construed as obstruction to what we are trying to do, right thing. Commissioner. Yeah. Commissioner Gardo here. Um, the, uh, the motion uh, that was added to this, it, I would call it a stick in the spokes type of motion. We got to move forward on this, folks. All right, so August 1st was, what, five weeks ago? And we've gotten to this point. We've had uh, uh, two uh, audit committee meetings. Um, I asked uh, what, where, the, where and when the $5,000 limit for the audit committee came in. It, uh, and I'm curious if that uh, uh, had been answered. Uh, you know, what is the date of that? Okay, was it $1990? Was it $1952? Was it $1929? 2007. $2007. Okay, so so maybe it's double that now, but I believe that that uh, procedurally uh, a number of, of of things in the uh, uh, in our bylaws need to have escalations, but that's for another uh, uh, another day. Uh, as as uh, Commissioner Mandyke said, uh, mayors have uh, spoken up wanting to have this uh, 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 external uh, audit. And the in independent consumer advocate also at our meeting yesterday uh, dialed in and, and said so. Um, yeah, this, this reminds me of, of 13B. Let's, let's move forward, OK? You know, which, which we, we, we close the doors and turn off the, 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 the phones about. We need to. We need to we need to get this going and move forward. So I, I, I will, for, for the, uh, the, the, the thing that came over the phone, I, I, I'm going to vote no. Good motion. Uh, further discussion? Commissioner Healy's on the phone. He wants to, he has to be recognized. Yeah, Commissioner Healy. Commissioner Healy. Yes, thank you. Uh, Yes, I'm, I'm here. Uh, sorry, I couldn't be with you folks in person tonight. I, I am here. I have been listening. I just want to add my agreement with uh, with Commissioner Mandy, Commissioner Gardeau. This independent investigation has to happen. It's the transparent thing to do for our ratepayers and our member towns. It's the fair thing to do for everybody involved. It's the the it is the thing that has to happen. And if we vote to refer this to finance. It's exactly what uh, Commissioner Gardeau said. It's a, a stick in the spokes. It will delay something that you know really needs to be underway as soon as possible. So I would, uh, I do not support referring it to finance. I would support uh, hearing the motion and approving the motion. Thank you. Further discussion? <clears throat> uh, for the record, um, again, I think that this is an issue that has to be heard. And um, I cons I'm concerned as well as anybody is on what we're spending. And I understand uh, what uh, Commissioner Vecino is saying. However, I think the $50,000 is being designated as the amount of money to be used. And uh, I, I concur that we should move forward and, and appropriate the $50,000 not to delay the issue. Question. Further questions? Okay. All those in favor, please signify. Mr. Chair, can I have a roll call vote, please? Can I have a roll call vote and yeah. make sure we clarify what the motion is? Thank you. Voice vote, fine. 
Um, is there a request for, uh, is there objection to a, a roll call vote? No objection. It's just. Go ahead. The, um, the motion on the floor is to refer uh, the expenditure of $50,000 to the Board of Finance. Adel? No. Avedesian? No. Buell? No. Bush? No. Curry? No. DiBella? No. Drake? Cardo? No. Gentile? No. Healy? No. Hoffman? No. Holloway? No. Yono? Lester? No. Lewis? No. Magnin? No. Mandike? No. Payne? No. Patel? No. Taylor? No. Torres? No. Vecino? Yes. Wolf? No. Motion uh, fails. Um, the motion before us is to allocate $50,000. Is there any discussion? Further discussion? Up to, not to exceed. Up to. Not to Up, exceed. Uh, well, it's $50,000. It's, that's all you're going to get, so Correct. that doesn't exceed the number. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner again, Torres. Again, my concern is the potential uh, overrun costs coming back to us on this. And I, I've, said it, I've said it before. I've had experience with this in the past. I think it was mentioned already, you know, these expenses do go up. And what, and my thing with, with uh, and, and I'm very supportive, we have to do this. This is no question about it. The issue is, I want to make sure that that, that $50,000 is going to get us where, we're go where we want to get, and then not have them come to us with a half-baked situation report and say, oh, it's going to cost another $25,000 or it's going to cost another $50,000. I've been through this. I went through this a year and a half ago. You know, so that's my experience. I, I hope that's not what happens here. Further discussion? Commissioner Curry. Just quickly, I'd like to add that, that uh, <coughs> Chairman of the Audit Committee, Chairman Van Dyke, uh, was very clear uh, and first off, th at this meeting, there was a lot of different personalities, a lot of different uh, thoughts put forward. But in the end, the committee agreed on, on the up to 50,000 um, that, that the committee would be interviewing potential candidates uh, that would perform this in individual um, audit, if you will, and fact finding, and that as part of that process, the chairman assured the committee and that there would be a very narrow scope assigned uh, to this person with the task of just finding out what we want to find out, that they can't go far away and come back for more money. Commissioner uh, Torres. Uh, yeah. with, with regards to, to the scope, uh, will the RFP or RFQ, I don't know how this is going to go out uh, in terms of getting the, uh, the consultant or the uh, uh, attorneys that are going to do, do this, uh, will they be made of very aware, clearly aware, that uh, whatever that scope is, <coughs> that the maximum okay, will not exceed the amount that, that has been authorized? Um, I think she's, uh, go ahead, Commissioner, you, I can't speak for you. Um, Commissioner Torres, through the chair, um, we will, we are looking at a very defined scope for what we will ask whoever we eventually hire for this. Um, we will work with Attorney Stone for a specific contract. So there are deliverables with a price to it, that this will not be an hourly type of thing, that this will be a, this is what we're asking you to do, um, and this is what we expect for in return of it. So we will be going under contract, and I would hope that we would be able to find someone that would do it as a project base and not on a per hourly base. 
and in informal discussions, we believe we can do that. Restricting yourself. Uh, okay. Um, further questions? Are we ready for a vote? <clears throat> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Po aye. Opposed? Passes. Um, item F is uh, consideration and protection, potential action regarding recommendations from internal audit related to independent investigation. No action taken by audit committee on a, a 9-6 uh, without objection. Skip this agenda item. Opportunity for general. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I had something else uh, I'd like to uh, talk about, if I could. Um, I'd like to recommend that it might be the best thing for the MDC and its ratepayers and the member towns if we ask Chairman DeBella to voluntarily step down temporarily until the audit committee receives its independent report and it's been brought to the full board for possible action. The Newington mayor sent a letter in recommending this and I believe this is, I believe there is several commissioners on the audit committee who also start, stated it might be the right thing to do. So I would propose the following resolution be it, um, be it hereby resolved that the MDC board request that William DeBella temporarily step down as chairman until the internal audit committee completes its work as referred to it by the MDC board on August 1st, 2022. Uh, that was a motion. Is that an acceptable motion? Um, what, what is it, part of E? No, it's yeah. just a motion on the floor, just my own motion. Oh, I understand. Like, okay. Point of order, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I, I think that in order for such a motion to be made, it would require an addendum to the agenda, which might take a, maybe a two-thirds vote. It would take a two-thirds vote if you were to amend the agenda. All right. <clears throat> Was there a second to the motion, or is it? I'm sorry. Is there a second to that motion? Uh, yes, based on talking to my people in the town, my uh, the uh, mayor uh, and the town manager, I'll second that motion. Well, I guess the question I'd ask is: there is there anything that allows that to happen when someone's elected to an office? A point don't... of order here. I I, I believe that. Yeah, that, that I, has I, not been cancelled. I raised the point of order, and I don't. I don't think the motion can it, be made it, unless there's an addendum to the agenda, and that would have to be a motion and voted right. on. You, that you'd have first. to. I'm sorry. You have to. You have to amend the agenda first in order to make the motion. You cannot make the motion without without amending the agenda. Action's been. T if I might, Mr. Chairman, as action's been taken on items A through E, and those actions are closed out. Action on number F has been passed because there was no action taken by the audit committee. If the maker of the motion wants to have that motion considered, he can move to amend the agenda to add that to the agenda. It requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, if it passes, then it will be added to the agenda and there can be a discussion on that motion. I will amend my motion to add it to the agenda. So there's, that, that would have to be, the only, the only reason I say this is that that requires uh, more than a majority vote. So that'll, I'll, we consider, that the chair should consider that a separate motion to amend the agenda to allow him to make the motion that he stated previously. And if, if the chair would call, ask for a second, and then we can discuss the amending the agenda. And a point of order again for clarification. Sure. In order to do this, you have to have two votes. One is one, you have to have to, you make the motion to amend. If that passes. I indicated as such. Right. Yes, because of, there's a different criteria for it passage. Gets, it gets confusing. It's okay. No, that's so, all right. Yep. Well, step one, you got you to gotta pass the, resol the resolution to amend the agenda. If that passes, then a second resolution is made to, for, to, uh, to do whatever he uh, wants to make the resolution on. That's and correct. Then we take a vote on that. And, and it's because there's a different standard for um, passage 
The first motion to amend requires a two-thirds vote. The second motion requires a majority vote. That's correct. Excuse me, just a point of order, Mr. Chair. I believe in the past we have passed resolutions um, to Attorney Stone without amending the agenda. So I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure I understand the difference between this and other resolutions that we have passed that have come based on discussion that we've gone ahead and proposed and have passed. And I'm just um, I'm curious as to why this is held to a different standard. Each, each of the items under item 15 of the agenda has been dealt with and closed. Item E is not acted upon, it's been passed. The only thing left on the agenda is items 16, 17, 18, and 19. And he wants, the, the maker of the motion wants to add another item to the agenda, which is the status of Chairman DeBella as, chair, as chairman of the district board. So it's, it's a new item and it should be added to the agenda. Thank you for clarification. Commissioner Curry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would only add that I'm not sure if flexibility is the right word, but Robert's Rules of Order is a very strange animal. And in the past, maybe we did pass resolutions without amending agendas, but then nobody raised the point of order. In this case, a point of order was raised, it had to be acted on, and that, that's the finding. So it is what it is. Commissioner? Allen, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but to your point, uh, Commissioner Curry, uh, <clears throat> I believe that if, in fact, those uh, situations occurred as explained, I would suggest that those resolutions were part of the agenda item being acted on and not just thrown out in an individual Man. Let's talk, let's let's talk. Let's the issue is: is there going to be a, a vote to amend the uh, amend the agenda? That's before us. It requires a two-thirds vote, and the question is debatable. I assume. Yes, it's debatable. We'll have it. Um, I just I just want to make the comment. I I, I believe that um, Commissioner Payne may have been attempting to act under item F, um, and, it was, and it was moved past so quickly that he did not have an opportunity to bring it up. So I believe that F isn't actually closed, and I believe the agenda is still open, and that his motion can be made under item F, which I don't believe was effectively closed out in a, in a, in a manner that gave him the opportunity. Discussion? Commissioner I, I, would, I would offer that Robert's Rules of Order is clear, I think, in that uh, once the topic is taken up, you can't take action that's being suggested until that topic has been closed and voted on if a vote is required. And since it was put on the, on the floor for discussion, that you can't move forward with um, the mode to, vote to, attend, to amend the agenda uh, until uh, that time. So I think that what, what we're doing is correct. Um, I, item E was called, or uh, I'm sorry, item F was, was called by the chair. Then, uh, then the motion was made. Under Robert's rules, when the item's closed out, it's closed out. You can't go backwards. I'm not sure there's, that the motion, and I'm not going to rule on this, but I'm not sure the motion is germane to any one of the items right. in Section 15 to begin right. with. But at least procedurally under Robert's rules, once the item's closed, it's closed. And that I recall, and I could be wrong, John, but correct me if I'm wrong, that the chairman went on to item F. Six. Six? Sixteen. No, and, and sixteen, but it was 15, certainly. Fifteen F was the 15 final F one. Fifteen F was the final one. He indicated that, that was, there was no action taken by the audit committee. Therefore, we're, no action is required by this boardy. So we're going to pass that. As it's passed that item on the agenda. And then went on, and, and then. Commissioner Payne um, asked, to asked, for, asked to be recognized, and he was, and that motion was made. That's my recollection of the order of events. That, that's how it appeared to be. I just think it went so quickly that Commissioner Payne didn't have an opportunity to speak to item F. Further discussion? I get it. Uh, could we have a roll call vote on this? 
Mr. Chairman, uh, point of order, I want to ask a question of the district council. Um, who, who can vote on this? Um, we have, um, this is about the chairman, and we also have a commissioner, Taylor, that I'd like to know if he's allowed to vote on this because a lot of this is, you know, he's involved in, in some of this. So is there, are these two individuals allowed to, to speak on this and vote? Well, my recollection is that um, for purposes of the uh, consideration by the audit committee of the issues bef before that committee, as referred to the, by the board, that Commissioner Taylor, and he'll correct me if I'm wrong, recused himself from that proceeding. Commissioner DeBella, I think on the August 1st meeting, I could be wrong, relinquished the chair when this item was discussed. Um, whether it's in the <coughs> audit committee meeting or somewhere else, the, the, the bottom line, at least as I see it, Commissioner Taylor recused himself from any consideration on the issue. And I'll let the chairman speak as to whether he should continue chairing uh, and voting on this issue or not. Thank you. I know that they both made a statement, uh, and, and by the way, a, a recusal is not an admission of anything. It's, it's merely the fact that they felt at the time that they should recuse themselves from any consideration on the issue. And, and um, that's what occurred. Of the audit committee. This is not a, an issue of the audit committee. It's being asked that I step down and no stated reason why I should stay down step down so i think we've got to deal with the procedural motion first and that's the motion to open up the agenda and let's stay consistent to that that's my ruling i, I did chairman. state a, i did state a reason mr chairman because uh, we we have a very frustrating and a confusing uh issue and uh i did state that um we wanted to do it only temporarily until the audit committee has its independent attorney uh, file or uh, fi come up with findings for the audit committee to be presented to the board. And it's very difficult for, I would imagine, the CEO and uh, the uh, attorney uh, Stone to, uh, for daily things. And it, this is only temporary. I'm not saying permanent. It's temporary until we, we, we are We are now debating uh, not the issue, the procedural issue. You're out of order. Um, is there any further discussion on the procedural motion to open the agenda up, which requires a two-thirds vote? Call the question. Uh, well, I'd, I'd ask for a roll call vote. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. On the, the motion to amend the agenda, Adel? No. Avedesian? Yes. Buell? No. Bush? Yes. Curry? No. DiBella? No. Gardo? Yes. Gentile? No. Healy? No. Hoffman? Yes. Holloway? No. Yono? Lester? No. Lewis? No. Magnin? No. Mandike? Yes. Payne? Yes. Patel? Yes. Taylor? No. Torres? No. Vecino? Wolf? No. The no's have it. What was the vote? One, two, three, four, six. Seven eyes. Thirteen no's. Okay. <coughs> further discussion, further uh, issues, uh, opportunity for general public comment. Commissioners' comments and questions. Commissioner Taylor. Uh, am I allowed to uh, comment or make a statement? It's still a democracy. Okay. <laughs> um, That's funny. As uh, someone who has been mentioned in the dispatches, um, I find it, if not amusing, somewhat upsetting. Um, I guess my first inclination is that there is mischief afoot. Um, I think so. <laughs> and I wish that um, the audit committee 
uh, would have been as judicious uh, in terms of uh, what they laid on me in terms of their statements and what they have alleged that I have engaged in. Uh, I was very forthright. Uh, the uh, head of the audit committee called me and said that, uh, asked me if I had spoken to uh, the uh, Mara firm. Uh, yes, I did. I spoke to one of the partners. I did not speak to Jim Sandler. Um, and I think, quite frankly, uh, I had a right to do so. But that's neither here nor there. Um, no one was present at the discussion or discussions that I had with uh, Attorney Barra. Uh, no one knows what has transpired. And you would think, based upon the charges that are made against me, that they were there and recorded every detail. Because if they would have heard the details, they would have understood very clearly what I was doing and what I was saying. I was basically dealing with a constituent. I have a right to do that as a commissioner. I'm not going to go into to all the details, but I'm perfectly prepared to mount a defense. Uh, and I'm going to mount one because essentially by charging me with this, you have damaged my reputation, all right? I have been here for over 20 years. I have never engaged in any wrongdoing. Uh, I have always worked very closely with all the commissioners, and I have been very careful to maintain a strict line between my functioning as a commissioner and staff and matters as they relate to the MDC. So all I'm saying to you, basically, is that I welcome an opportunity to state my case. Uh, I will welcome the opportunity to appear before the Ethics Board. It is comprised essentially of members that I view as being disinterested and who will give a fair hearing. Uh, I can present a case, if you like, at some point in time before the board, but I've just refused to engage in public theater. That is not the case. The issue here is the MDC and its survival as a viable institution. And if people are concerned about how it appears to the public, I think the public needs to be reminded that we've put $2 billion in the ground. And if they're concerned about transparency, they could have come down here and sat in all these meetings and other things that we engaged in, struggling, trying to minimize the costs. Now, for those of you who can read, I suggest that you take a look at Deer Island because that's basically what we were facing in terms of the things that we did here. Now, I want to be clear about a couple of things. I am sort of shocked and dismayed uh, that there are these attacks essentially against Bill DeBella. Uh, number one, I'm just going to be flat out about it. Bill DeBella did not know that I spoke to the Mara Sandler firm. He had nothing to do with it. Now, I think, you know, people must think that, you know, if you live in Bloomfield, you're stupid and you don't know how to analyze a situation and come to a conclusion as to what you think is the most viable way to deal with it. Now, I want you folks to understand something. You've opened a can of worms, okay? Understand this, you've opened a can of worms. And since you've opened it, you better be prepared for what's on the bottom. Because if this thing goes to litigation and the other side has lawyered up, okay, then a lot of stuff is gonna come out. So just be prepared for that. If you think that somebody is gonna look at this for $50,000, I think you've got another guest coming. I think it's gonna be six figures, but that's all right. In your infinite wisdom, you make the decision. We've disagreed on this board. I have no problems with that. And you know, I'll, 
I stand uh, to, to, in terms of what you want to do. However, for me, the issue is, one, my reputation has been impugned. And I'm going to have to defend that. And I will do so. But I want you to understand, it's not going to be very nice. Because the broad attack on me and the impression that you've created out there in the general community that somehow I'm down here wheeling and dealing and doing what I should do. But be that as it may, uh, I only want the best for the MDC. That's all I want. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'm, I Further apologize comments? for the screed. Further comments, Commissioner Curry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the beginning of the meeting, the consumer advocate indicated that he'd, he'd heard from uh, some of our rate payers with, with various issues. And I'd like to know, maybe for Scott, uh, ha has, <coughs> has he then forwarded those, those rate payer concerns to the appropriate person or, or unit within MDC? Uh, I, I am not aware of any specific issues, but when Joe does have issues, he does send them through John Myrtle, and we do try to address them immediately. Uh, is we have already started our communication outreach in anticipation of the integrated plan being approved by actually meeting out with the, with the stakeholders in Blue Hills and Granby areas. And the first step is um, what we call our belts and suspenders project, which is our backwater valve. So we've been really spending a lot of time, Chris and his staff have spent a lot of time. As you know, we budgeted $2 million uh, last year for the uh, backwater valve program. So the backwater valve program is like the first step in educating the community of why the clean water project, the integrated plan is so important. But we can't really get started um, until Tonight, the board approved the integrated plan. We'll need to um, pass an ordinance which will allow us to start utilizing the uh, clean water fund, the, uh, uh, the revolving fund that we have to spend money to start working on those uh, initial uh, communications, uh, design, and, and studies. That was a no or a yes. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not aware of any specific issues that Joe has, but we, when they do come in, we address them immediately. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Bush. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the proverbial can of worms that we're going to open is going to serve to exonerate those who are innocent. That's the point, right? I mean, I'm, I, might, I might be naive. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I definitely have my rose-colored glasses firmly screwed to my head because I like to look at the world in a positive light. But let's not forget that this board ordered our at zero money to be spent with attorney Sandler. We as a board voted, we're not going to spend any additional money. But yet, we're looking at $85,000 worth of bills. We today voted not to pay that bill. Something went wrong somewhere in the process. What are we and the $50,000 that we spend, every single cent is going to be worth finding out what went wrong. I hope that nobody here has done anything to damage the reputation of the MDC. Hopefully, this spotlight shines on attorney, attorney Sandler. Maybe he's, he's the one. Who knows? I'm not pointing the spotlight. I don't, in fact, I don't want any spotlight anywhere. Let's let this independent counsel figure out the problem and come up <laughs> with, the, with the truth, and, 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 and if we don't want to spend $50,000, then everyone just come out, say what happened, tell the truth, under oath or whatever you do, and write, oh, this is what happened. I'm innocent. We don't have to spend any money at all. We could spend zero dollars. We don't have to spend any money hiring an attorney if everybody would just come out and just say what happened. Right? Why do we have to spend any money? 
We as a board voted not to spend any money, but yet we have a bill for $85,000. That's all I have to say. Excuse me, I think we voted to vote for $50,000. No, no, what, what are you saying, we didn't vote? No, I'm saying it's what money well spent. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's good to spend in that, that if there's a can of worms that we open up, well, hopefully $50,000 will be able to clean it. I'm not addressing that. I thought you were saying that we didn't vote for it. No, no, no. I, it was no, no. voted for almost unanimously. Yeah, no. I, okay. Hopefully. I, hopefully further, I further discussion and questions. Uh, uh, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Torres. Yeah. I, first of all, I'm, I'm glad that we're moving forward with the conflict of interest issue because I think, you know, uh, we don't understand uh, perhaps uh, what con constitutes a potential conflict of interest. I think it's got to be very clear to people what it is and what it isn't. Yeah. The same is true, I think, for the ethics issue. I'm completely unaware, unfortunately, and I, you know, of what constitutes an ethics violation, you know, because I haven't had any kind of, just like we don't have a, a uh, conflict of interest uh, document, uh, one that spells out what what, a, what the, uh, an, an ethics violation would be. And I would suggest that somehow there would be a, some kind of session or workshop or training session that you know, educates all of us as to what constitutes what. Because we could be making all kinds of mistakes in good, you know, in, 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 a, in, a, uh, a good, in an effort, a good faith effort to do something and find out that we're violating some kind of an ethic. You know. And that's the, the, the real issues, real legal issues that may, you know, that, that may be uh, 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 get us into trouble. So just uh, for, you know, uh, 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 consideration, you know, that we have some kind of, of uh, session, short workshop, an hour, whatever, you know, that talks about, you know, <coughs> what can we, we do or what can, can't we do? Because we, we do have constituents. We do talk to people. You know, we talk to, we talk to politicians. Uh, we talk to each other. You know, uh, where do we cross the line? And, you know, so I don't want to, you know, to me, I, I, it feels almost unfair that, that, you know, that we're mentioning one of our uh, commissioners here about doing something. I don't even know what the hell that is, that, that uh, B2K is, you know. Uh, so, again, you know, I don't want to make a mistake and, you know, and do something stupid that's going to get me into trouble. So let's, you know, let's educate everybody about what it, what it is that we can and cannot do because we may do things in good faith that may get us into, you know, into trouble. Further uh, issues, questions? If not, the proper motion, motion of adjournment adjourn. is in order. Adjourn.